Greetings everyone and welcome back to the channel. So we've done this style of format once before where we break down your competition footage and basically we're just copying Andrew Wilsey and the way he structured his Patreon page and I actually did just add a tier to the Patreon where you can sign up to have your competition footage reviewed but just a heads up I'm planning to make my own website because Patreon absolutely destroys me with fees. So keep an eye out for that sooner rather than later and let's get into Anthony's competition footage. <laughs> So Anthony is the one on the right and we come out and initiate with a little bit of lazy grip fighting and our opponent decides to sit to guard with a collar tie. Now luckily he didn't do anything with it but it can be a very dangerous situation if we allow our opponent to get control of our head and then sit to guard. But we do a good job of maintaining our posture and standing up but when doing so we put our hand on our opponent's leg. And he does a good job of using this opportunity to take control of our arm. So we need to be ready to break that grip. And at the same time he controls our arm, he also gains control of our leg and then uses it to shoot in a deep De La Hiva hook. But to your credit, Anthony, you look really comfortable right now, and you counter by sitting into insights and Kaku and attacking a straight ankle lock. Now this strategy is a bit risky with points, and especially if heel hooks are illegal, but to your credit, it looked like you knew what you wanted to do in the match, and you got there right away. And it looks like this guy really didn't know what he was doing, because he's posting on your foot and trying to hop over it, which would give you a shoe ace and Kaku and make the lock even tighter. Granted, it would make it much more difficult for you to chase the back or do things like that but I don't think that was his mindset right I think he was a bit confused about the situation and you had him uncomfortable but nonetheless he ends up freeing his knee and when he does you have the option to switch to another form of guard like x guard but in this situation I definitely think you did the right thing and you came up on top to avoid any points being scored on you but when you come up on top your knee is facing inside where I think it really should be trying to pin your opponent's leg to the ground and this allows him to recover his guard and then kind of reset the situation and then you drop into a scoop grip with your right hand. Now the question is, what are you going to do with that scoop grip? Are you going to do a form of pressure passing, such as an over-under pass? But like we talked about previously, this can be a bit risky no-gi and leaves you vulnerable to things like Kimura's. So the only time I really find myself using over under passing nogi is when I'm coming up from half guard on a sweep. Or you can use that scoop grip to transition to a more loose form of passing and work to extract your foot. Or one of my favorites right now is to use that scoop grip to get your opponent to react and make it easy for you to drop into a chest to chest half guard position. Which in some people's opinion is the best overall method of passing guard. But you don't end up doing anything meaningful with this scoop grip and you actually end up switching sides with your scoop grip and it just kind of looks like you don't have a plan right now but you do end up using the scoop grip to get control of your opponent's head and as your opponent is recovering their guard you continue to try to chase his head and if we watch Nicky Ryan do this exact same thing, you can see his arm initially goes over his opponent's shoulder to prevent the guillotine. But as soon as his head is free, he stops chasing the head and transitions to the hips through the form of a body lock. Because we continued to chase the head, our opponent was able to recover their guard. And they start to climb their legs up right away, but we do a good job of posturing. And although they have their legs up really high on our body, it makes it very hard for them to do anything meaningful with this position when our posture is so good. So great job there, and we slip out of his armbar attempt, which is a risk for him right it's much safer for him to just stay in close guard and lock you down but he decided to take a risk and go for an armbar and if that armbar doesn't work there should be consequences for that risk do a great job of escaping bad situations but afterwards you just kind of back away and let your opponent reset now you're back to square one so if you're looking for material to study to help you with this i wouldn't necessarily recommend watching john's submission escapes instructional because a lot of the counters he shows in that are leg lock oriented and like we talked about if you're competing in this type of competition it could be a risky strategy to sit back on a leg lock. And I think it would be much more beneficial to you to study things like John's guard passing, Gordon's guard passing, and hopefully soon Gordon's guard passing 2.0. Because then as you escape the triangle, you'll realize that you're three quarters of the way to a guard pass. So why would you go back to square one where your opponent can throw in their De La Hiva hook? And granted, it's not a very good De La Hiva hook. You pop it off very easily, but still we're back in their game. And I think watching these guard passing instructionals will help you see more opportunities. Like when your opponent sits up like this, it's a great time to enter into a body lock pass. 
but nonetheless we find ourselves back in an open guard scenario and we dive over the top with a guillotine. Then you end up throwing your leg over your opponent's back which shows me you're trying to use this to finish the guillotine. Now if you're looking for someone to study on this, I think Brianna St. Marie used this beautifully in her ADCC trials performance. And if we watch her, you can see how kind of uncommitted she is to that guillotine grip. She's just using it as really a form of control and eventually to pass the guard. And eventually as her opponent's trying to build a base, she uses that head and arm grip to break her opponent back down to the mat. So the primary focus is control until she sees the opportunity to lock in the submission. And this example here is very similar to what you did in your match, where you dive over the top on this guillotine, but you can see how uncommitted she is to that guillotine grip, and she's kind of playing back and forth between having her opponent's arm inside the choke and outside the choke. And she eventually uses the head and arm grip to come up on top and perform the exact same breakdown she did previously and get the submission. So unless the initial wrap around your opponent's neck is perfect, a lot of times it's not going to be a good idea to sit to your butt and try and finish a guillotine from here. And it leads to us having to scramble up again to avoid getting scored on, and we end up in this four-point position here. Now, as our opponent's falling off the top, luckily they don't transition to a straight arm lock, and they kind of resort to just grabbing onto a Kimura out of desperation. But again, as soon as we break out of this Kimura, it's a great opportunity to go into guard passing. But instead, we sit back and allow our opponent to recover. And then, even worse, we start walking towards him on our knees which is probably not a good idea and then we just get pulled into guard now i realize at this point you're probably exhausted and you're just looking for a place to catch your breath and slow things down now after doing that for a little bit in closed guard, his guard eventually opened. And again, this is where I think watching these guard passing instructionals is going to be very beneficial so you understand where the battles are. Because when his guard opens, he should not be able to get his knee back inside. But you give him plenty of space to bring his knee back in and then he just goes right into off balancing you. So I think there are a lot of good opportunities here that we can capitalize on in the future. Now this part here is pretty slick. You kind of go into a half-hearted ankle pick and then you pull guard right into a double kuchi and then as your opponent falls, you follow up right into a body lock. I think that was a really nice chaining of attacks right there. Now granted, we don't do much with the body lock and we end up being put back in closed guard, but regardless, I do think that was a really good sequence for you. Now we find ourselves fighting out of a triangle. And again, like I said before, I think you do a very good job of getting yourself out of dangerous situations. And I could be wrong, but I don't think this guy actually posed a threat at submitting you at any point in this match, which is a complicated to you you looked very comfortable in these situations but as soon as we break out of these situations we should be looking to capitalize on our opponent's overextension and this would be a great time to go into a toriando style pass and if you don't complete the guard pass at least you'll find yourself in chest to chest half guard but instead we allow our opponent to get their legs back in play and it could be because the game plan is to go for these straight ankle locks which is fine if that's the game plan that's the game plan right but realize the opportunity cost of you allowing to get your opponent's legs back into play is that you're sacrificing very deep guard passing entries so now we find ourselves back with this scoop grip trying to figure out what we want to do with it. But meanwhile, our opponent's able to get a grip on our arm and our leg, allowing him to initiate a sweep that we have to respect. And it leads to us being taken down and finding ourselves on the bottom of mount with our back exposed. And again, to your credit, you do a great job of getting out of this sticky situation. I can't really see how you did it, but you ended up getting your back flat to the ground. And again, I can tell you're very comfortable in this situation and you probably practiced it a lot because you take these two cross grips here, which make it very difficult for your opponent to punch into any meaningful underhook. Now you switch to this frame here, which is very nice, and you initiate your kipping escape. Now I do think your kipping escape could use a bit of work, your feet are separated and your knees are not together, like you see Gary Tonin doing here. But nonetheless, your escape worked, and because heel hooks are illegal, I think you did a very smart thing and transitioned to X guard right away to come up on the sweep. Now your opponent's going to want to pressure back into you and put your back flat on the mat. And because you took your leg off of his, that allowed him to do that. And you use this opportunity to go to my favorite inside Sankaku entry, which again, to your credit, if this is the plan, you had very good ways of getting to your game. It's just kind of unfortunate that the rules don't allow you to do the most effective form of submission from there, but it is what it is. But this sequence that you just pulled off is my favorite thing to do in Jiu Jitsu right now, where you start in the bottom of mount and do a kipping escape. And if your opponent turns to run, you would go into an outside heel hook and they don't want that. So they turn to face you. And when doing so, you hit that inside Senkaku entry. But one thing I would say that you could work on is trying to use the momentum a little better because as he's pressuring into you to put your back on the mat, this is a great time to just roll with his pressure right into that inside Senkaku entry. As opposed to settling with your back on the mat and then initiating the inside Senkaku entry, it would be much more efficient if these flowed together. Now, after ripping on that straight ankle lock for a little bit, you realize it wasn't going to work and you use the inside Senkaku to try to initiate a guard pass. And I know you know this because you talked about it in the Discord, how you miss this underhook here. Your opponent's arm is literally on 
on the ground, leaving you all the space in the world to get that underhook. But as we come out on the other side, he has the underhook, which results in a failed guard pass and ending up in that guillotine situation we found ourselves in earlier. So again, I really do think studying guard passing material is going to help your game tremendously. You look very comfortable in sticky situations. I just think you can capitalize on them much better if you study guard passing. And unfortunately, this match ends in what looks like us going for kind of a janky single leg and our opponent snapping us down at the same time. So the ref gives him two points for the takedown. But this is where things get a little more interesting for me because you're doing a great job with your bottom arm at preventing your opponent from getting a cross face. But for some reason with your top arm, you pull it out way up over your head and it allows your opponent to get control of that arm and then pummel in his cross face. So again, I mean, I'm sure you were just exhausted at the time and the match was about to end anyway, but our hand positioning and frames went from very good to terrible and it led to us getting kind of smashed in side control. So again, thank you to Anthony for sending in this footage. It takes a lot of courage to have your performances reviewed and critiqued. So thank you very much. And if anyone else is interested, check out the Patreon for now, but I'm hoping to have a website in the future to avoid those fees. Thank you for the support and we'll see you in the next one.